Hey, it's Eric Peterson here, hijacking the Roundtable podcast today, uh, filling in for The Land Geek, Mark Podolsky, www.thelandgeek.com. Don't worry, Mark is safe and sound in an undisclosed location to avoid any possible contact with the coronavirus. He stopped at Costco <laughs> on the way and bought enough toilet paper and water for the next two years. He's set. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyways, um, as you can tell, Mark's not here today, and uh, I am hosting the podcast. So we have most of our regulars here with us, including a, a special guest that uh, we will be revealing soon. So uh, let's get started by welcoming dude buddy, Scott Bossman, the Nightcap OG. How's it going, Scott? Nice, nice intro, dude. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> It's going really well. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And we've got Mr. Mike Zeno, the Zen master, I believe. Are you on a cruise right now, Mike? No, no. That's uh, um, when this podcast airs, we'll be on the cruise. So, okay. Yeah, we'll, I knew yeah, it was we'll, coming. Yeah. Not, <laughs> it's going to be fun. Now. We'll probably have lo lots of uh, free space to roam. Yeah. We'll be fighting for chairs. Uh, <laughs> it'll be great. <laughs> Yeah, it might be you and the captain. Yep. <laughs> yes. I was telling Mike, Dave flew home from Punta Cana on Sunday on a flight that flies 160, 165 people. There were two folks on the flight. Wow. Ooh, Traveling way down. Yeah, so Mike will have a good time. No lines. Ho hopefully. Yeah. No lines, no waiting. All right. Well... And you all know Mimi. She's here. Welcome to Terrorist Hunter. Good to Hi. have you. We have coronavirus here in Arlington now. They're talking about closing the schools down. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Got all my hand sanitizer and my soap. My staple <laughs> stocked up. Perfect. It's everywhere. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so, today's podcast sponsored by Flight School Learn the Land Business from the Brain. Scott Todd in just 14 weeks. For more information, visit the Land Geek slash training and schedule a call with Scott Bossman or Mike Zeno. And uh, without further ado, um, let's go ahead and get started today. Our special guest is none other than Sid Christensen. Um, Sid has been a part of the Land Geek community for probably about a year now, um, started off in, in flight school and is now a current coaching student. So, um, Sid, do you want to just start off by, by telling us about how you got here and, and what flight school was like, how the coaching program has helped you grow your business? Yeah, yeah, you bet. So, I was just thinking about, like, kind of what started all this, and I've always been interested in looking for different alternatives to make money. And, you know, I, rather than just working, I'd love the idea of having money work for you. And so I actually got started in this by listening to the Land Geek podcast. And I thought that flipping land would take a lot of work. It was kind of weird. And so I was going to go the, the route of buying and selling or not buying just, I mean, not selling, but just buying rentals and then renting them out. And I was about to buy one and then I, uh, I ended up breaking my leg on a snow bike and um, I, I work construction so it's very important to be able to walk around and do that work. So me breaking my leg, I had all this time on my hands. Um, but also I was just laying in the snow um, just thinking about what I could do um, as we're waiting for the life flight helicopter to come pick me up. Um, I thought, well, now I can look into that land thing. I have all this time on my hands and I can just see what it's all about. And maybe I can just kind of dabble in it a little bit and see, see where it goes. And, and I also thought, you know, what really motivated me to get really after this was to get my wife home from work. She's a nurse and we now have three kids and it's, I mean, there's, we're so, we're very busy with that. And, um, she wants to be a stay at home mom. So that was really what was my motivation. And, and then also it'd be nice to 
replace my income uh, eventually. So um, I got on the phone with Scott Bossman. We got set up into flight school, and uh, I think it started one year from today, I think, is when we started. And going through flight school, Scott Todd, just being the great teacher that he is, um, he made us take action, and I, I just followed what he told us to do, and um, and look, what do you know, it worked. <laughs> so um, it's been good. So a big learning curve for me, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great story, Sid. I mean, you, you make that, uh, the injury of, of laying there on the mountain, you know, with a broken leg just sound like nothing, but I'm sure it was, it was a pretty intense situation for yourself and, and those that were with you. Um, but glad you're, you're doing well now and uh, enjoying the land business here. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I, I, I never gave it up. I, I went snow biking last week, so we're back, we're back on the bike and tearing things up again so good good i'm just i'm just avoiding my brother a little bit i'm, <laughs> I'm hanging back a little bit more making sure he's not going to run into me because that's what happened <laughs> he ran into me and broke my leg so i mean i'm definitely a little bit more cautious <laughs> excellent all right um i'm going to pass it over to mr scott bossman for the first question to sid all right, awesome. So this is kind of reminiscent to me of Grill the Geeks at boot camp. This is this is what we do. We have all the coaching students get up front and, and uh, talk to us about their journey. And uh, one of my favorite parts of boot camp is just hearing hearing where people were a year ago and where they are today. And Sid, I remember talking to you a year ago. I was at a bed and breakfast in in uh, Illinois, hanging out for the weekend with my wife, drinking some coffee. And I remember your story. And I remember thinking that's you know. It's, it's cool because Mike Zano and I get to talk to a lot of people like you that just, you know, they have an amazing why. So you talked a little bit about your why, but I guess uh, expand on that a little bit. And for me, uh, you know, when things got really difficult, the why kind of keeps you going. So when things are difficult for you, what do you, what do, you do and, and how, do you, how do you handle things? And, and uh, maybe we can get to a little bit more of the logistics of your business in a minute. but. Tell us a little bit more about your why and, and uh, how that motivates you, I guess. Yeah. So um, my uh, parents, they've, uh, my dad's been a super hard worker all his life. We, he's uh, built a, a construction business. And I work for him. We also own a farm. And um, I've always remembered uh, being able to spend time with him and work with him. But also the summers are so busy. We're we're moving irrigation pipe, we're, di you know, digging basements, and, and in the winter, things slow down, and, um, but in the summer, that's, like, when you want to go on vacations and spend all this time with your family, and I just looked at my, my young family, and I'm, I just want more time with them eventually to, you know, do, do those, some of those things, go on trips, and being able to <clears throat> stay, stay with and go camping or whatever. So that's what really motivates me. And also um, I want my, my wife to be a stay at home mom and she wants to be a stay at home mom. And um, I, I think it'd be awesome to, you know, be a stay at home dad. Now, I don't think I could stay at home all the time. I have to, I'll have to always be working or doing something, something busy, but um, I just want to have the option to be financially free eventually. And do you feel like it's going that direction? I mean, you look at your journey over the last year, where you were a year ago, where you are now. Just tell us a little bit about that and how it feels. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's definitely times where you question, like, oh, man, is this really going to work? Um, <laughs> am I going to really be able to sell this property that I got? And um, just follow, like, doing the daily things, the, those small little things, um, they all of a sudden you, you you start selling property, you start finding property to buy, and um, it's started to work. Like at the first, I you know I was scared, nervous. Like, is it going to work for me? And eventually, I've started seeing those little wins, those little successes, and that's just kind of what keeps me motivated to keep keep um, moving forward with this. Awesome. Well, I don't want to steal all the questions, so. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Eric, who's next? <laughs> Let's go to Mike next. Sid, um, 
great to have you on here. Curious, you seem, I've always thought of you as like super positive, like you just have an ultra positive personality. How much, well, first of all, I guess you can confirm whether that's true or not, but uh, how much do you think that's led, yeah. contributed to your success? I mean, did you, I mean, I know it's you had some doubts in the beginning, but you seem really positive. And did, how, how much does the attitude that you bring to the equation help you? Um, hmm, I think it helps a lot. I think that's another trait that I get from my my dad is he's uh he's super positive, and you know, there's in the construction world, we I've seen him go through hard times where we had a broken piece of equipment uh, and he's made it through it, but he's like, he's showing me just to get in there and figure it out. He, he just says, you can do it. You can almost do anything as long as you put your mind to it. And mm -hmm. that's one thing I've learned from my dad is um, if you, you just need to figure it out for yourself. And it, it's sometimes it takes hard work and uh, other times it comes easy, but most of the time it's going to be hard at first, but as you uh, do it, you'll get better at it. And I think, I don't know. He just blessed me with that outlook of life. Cause I mean, we always, he always had a good, good look on life. He always tried to look at the positives in life and he's been very successful in doing it um, and in doing construction. But I think it's because he's, he's not stopped at, at a problem and put his hands up. He's got in there and he's figured it out. Hmm. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. You know, kind of leads me into the, the consistency question. I often tell people, you know, the biggest challenge that they're probably going to encounter in the beginning is consistency, right? So the fact of uh, getting everything done, you know, getting the there's five steps we follow. We always talk about them, but staying consistent with them. How have you um, managed to keep consistent? Has there been any, uh, you know, any tips for anybody? Or um, obviously, uh, you know, life happens. Things tend to get in the way. I know you've had. Uh, some wonderful things happened to your family, you know, new addition that's probably challenged your time, but how'd you stay consistent? Um, I find that it's really quiet about 4 a.m. So <laughs> <laughs> that's when I uh, get up and I, I do just the, the daily things I have set aside. Just So I'm waking up early, um, doing, you know, posting ads, uh, training VAs, building building systems and just learning in the mornings that's that's when i get my best work done is from 4 a.m to 6 a.m and then after that um i'm greeted by my boys and they're they're noisy and they're ready to play and anyway so I, I spend a little time with them before i go to work and so i i, I just carve that time out and you know i uh, i just don't get much sleep but i know it's going to be worth it in the end <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, that's awesome. I mean, definitely sounds like you have a, basically a power morning, right? That you, uh, that you embrace and, uh, um, you know, that's awesome. So I guess final question would be, um, what's, I, I guess, what is something you're, I'm not going to say most proud of, but in terms of an obstacle that you've overcome, you know, in this process, you said it's been about a year. Um, has there been something that stands out that, uh, you know, kind of, create a roadblock but you did what your dad taught you and you pushed through it anything in particular or uh, I don't know open-ended yeah so when I first uh, I think my first boot camp I went to right about then I bought a bunch of properties that I thought I could sell um, and I was just having a hard hard time selling them and I, I couldn't put my finger on it, but um, I offered them for wholesale and I, I tried different things um, to, to sell them. And eventually they sold. I, I sold a few on, on land arbitrage. So I just, I tried different things. So that, that was maybe my first challenge is getting some property that I wasn't sure about being able to sell. I was uh, nervous because I, I, I didn't, it was a new area I didn't really know as well. and. Um, but I, I mean, we, I got, got them sold eventually. And, uh, I don't know, that, that was, I think seeing me do that just kind of gave me the confidence that I could do it with other properties. As long as we're buying them right. Um, like, like we're taught, you know, about a quarter of what they're worth, then 
I mean, you, you should, you, you will be able to sell them. It just will take a little bit of effort. Oh, great. No, great answer. Thank you. Yeah, I think that, uh, um, you know, rinse, repeat, as Mark always says, and each time you go through it, uh, I agree, it builds confidence and it's like seasons you as a land investor, right? And gives you the ability to, uh, um, you know, take on bigger things with confidence. So very good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I will yeah. hand it back to our host. All right. Thanks, Mike. Mimi, what questions do you have for Sid today? Well, I'd like to know what you find the hardest part of the business is for you. What do you struggle with? What do you look to delegate? And what part actually suits you well? What do you like to do? And what do you plan on keeping? Hmm. So the hardest part, I would say, is just trying to hire people. I have a hard time letting go, I think. I mean, I've had, I've hired people and it's been a huge benefit, but um, I think building the systems and training is, I'm a, I have a little bit harder time with. And I think it's because I get a little frustrated because I, I expect more from people than they <laughs> give. And I know it's me. I need to be better at training. And I, that, that's, that aspect has been hard for me, but I, I'm seeing that I'm able to, I've hired a few, a few uh, tasks out like, uh, I hate, I hate due diligence. <laughs> I hate doing all that research. And I, I was able to get rid of like the title search and um, the due diligence and kind of all that at first, just doing all that, um, I don't know, mindless searching. Cause I, I, uh, I hated that. Um, what I do like about the business is I, I really like um, selling uh, properties. I get excited about it and I'm working with the different buyers uh, on the properties and, um, anyway, just kind of, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy that and just closing the deal and what, what brings the money in. So. <laughs> That's so you think you'll keep that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Very good. So, um, Sid, what, uh, what advice would you have for someone just getting started in the business maybe they found the podcast or read mark's book or you know they're they're just getting started i mean any advice there i i'd say what really helped me was taking flight school um would be my advice just because all all the information is out there to do you know at pretty much anything you you could figure it out on your own but flight school really like it shows you examples of how the work is to be done. And that's really what I needed. I just needed someone that knows what they're doing just to show me how to do it. I think that was really beneficial just to have, have somebody just show me how to do it. And, um, you know, I got the toolkit and I, I read Mark's book and that was helpful, but um, just taking action was probably the most helpful of all just learning as I go. So did you, you bought the toolkit and then you went into flight school. Did you go to boot camp before flight school? No, I, well, I bought the toolkit and, and flight school at once because I think okay. flight school was starting like one week later. So I read like one thing in the toolkit. <laughs> okay. And then I went to boot camp, uh, so it was a, I think a month or so after flight school. And that was, that was really beneficial too, just a re refresher of everything you learn in flight school and being able to talk to the coaches with your questions and um, meet the community. Um, that was, that, that's been awesome because um, the community I, were able to work with each other and, you know, buy and sell properties with one another to, you know, close deals. So that's been really helpful. Great. Um, I think one of the, probably the most common question that, that gets asked during Grill the Geeks is, is what has been your favorite deal so far and, and what are the numbers? Hmm. to think about that. Uh, probably my first one. And the reason why I say it, because I think that's what really gave me the confident to, confidence to go forward. And this one, um, it, was, it was at boot camp. And the, way, the, the buyer was not the best buyer. I was just ready to sell something. I was excited about it. And, but I, I made about $1,000 uh, off that deal. And then she defaulted. And then I've sold that property again. So, so far, that's been my favorite deal. <laughs> 
So the, the property that keeps on giving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I got all my money out of that property for the first sale. And then the second sale was just all profit. And so, I mean, that was exciting for me. It was just a small little property, but it just shows that, you know, um, this, this system works. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I think, uh, if everybody has another question, we'll go around the room one more time. So Scott. Oh, I just want to say, I, I like what Sid said about, uh, having Scott Todd as a mentor, because like Sid, can you imagine running an excavator without having, like, without having a mentor, like learning, learning things online or on YouTube without somebody there? Or can I imagine being a physical therapist without like going to school? And there are some people out there who are very gifted who could like take that information and, and come out the back end and able to do really high level things like that. But <clears throat> that, that to me is what flight school is. I mean, you're there, he's literally a seasoned professor in the land business. And uh, you go from, you know, zero miles per hour to 60 over in four months, and then you're doing deals. It's like, I know how to do this. <clears throat> but um, so I love that. But let's see, what other question? Um, tell us a little bit about, so you went to boot camp, which is always a phenomenal experience. I think that's kind of a, I don't know, it's, it's a really, uh, it's an experience that leaves a major impact on all lane geeks, I think. Uh, so you, you had a great first boot camp. I remember talking to you there, but then the next boot camp, once you started coaching, you, you get to go into the VIP room there. Tell us a little bit about the VIP room at, at boot camp and what that experience is like for you and how that helps grow your business as well. Yeah. So I think we're all at different points in our business. We're all working on different parts of our business. And sometimes for me, I was, you get a little just kind of distracted on certain things. Like I, I, was, I can't remember what I was worried about then, but when I went to boot camp in the VIP room, it's the community uh, of all, all of the, the land geeks together are, um, you know, they bring all that knowledge into one room and then you're able to listen to everybody and then apply what, you know, what is best for your business. So what you're going through and you could ask, you could ask, you know, the land geeks, you guys, the coaches, um, different, like whatever you're going through in your business, you're able to get like answers. And it's not just like a coach call because <laughs> I would get, I get an answer. Then I, I go and think about it for about uh, four hours. Then I come back with another question. Um, on that same, same thing. And I was able to do that with, you know, you know, those three days or two days or whatever. And that was really nice to do. Oh, Scott, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So you get all those high level executors in the room and it just kind of elevates the room, which I think is really awesome. So cool. Are you going to the next boot camp uh, in, in April? Hopefully. Uh I'm not. <laughs> I'm okay. staying home with the, my wife's like, you need to stay home this time with the kids. So. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll FaceTime you or something and you can feel like you're there. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, awesome. awesome. Thanks, Scott. Uh, Mike, do you have another question for Sid? Well, I think I'd just like to, you know, you were talking about that micro deal that, you know, the first deal you had and, sold for a thousand and I think it's often overlooked that we're in a very we're in a micro niche when it comes a niche whatever when it comes to real estate and I think it's it's actually exciting that people know they can pick it up by their own bootstrap so if you wouldn't mind just like what's your average acquisition cost I think it's always good for people to hear you know the type of market we're involved in so how much I pay to buy the property and go through all the so, yeah, not so much what you sell for, really. I mean, we could talk about that if you want, but just curious, like, how much does it cost to buy a property that you could actually start to build some serious passive income with, you know, selling one, selling another, because that's what we do. And I think that oftentimes that's missed, and it's an important point for people to realize that, you know, how much would I be looking to invest in a property if I wanted to do something similar to what you're doing? Yeah. So I think at the low end, I've uh, bought property for about $300. And then on the high end, it's been about $1,800, just depending on the property. So, so it's not, I mean, it's, everything's under $2,000 per property. And um, that, you know, you, and then just times it by four. That's what I've been trying to do mostly is times things by four. Obviously, it's sometimes a little different. Sometimes other property like that 
that first property I was talking about, I sold, I bought that one for $300, but I, I sold that one um, for I think 3,600. So, so every once in a while you get those kind of yields, but um, is that what you were asking? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's that's exactly. Yeah, that's what exactly it. Just about. just people get a good sense that, and I love that. I love that this is a business that you can build, steadily build wealth on micro deals. So yes, thank you. Awesome, thanks, Mike. Mimi, do you have another question for Sid? Sure. What are your goals for your business for twenty twenty? Twenty twenty. So my goal, I I kind of been doing it by a month. I guess I have to, I'll have to add it up, but I'm trying to increase my passive income by $400 every month. Um, that's kind of my goal. Um, so, and right now I'm actually ahead of that. So I might just cut a month off and then try and go more, like just go there faster. So that's, that's been my goal right now. Um, I guess 400 times 12, that would be <laughs> whatever that is. That's my, my goal of increasing. But I know, you know, once you get that increase, it's just, you know, it, it adds to the big pile eventually. Right. And um, as you learn, right, you'll gain <laughs> momentum and speed and you'll go beyond that. Yeah. Well, awesome. Good for you. Sid, that's awesome. Um, so just to give the listeners an idea, like, um, you know, you've, you've been in the business for about 12 months, give or take. And how many... Uh, terms deals do you do you currently have oh I should have looked that up uh, <laughs> I know I've done so there, I have about 30 terms 30. deals and then 10 cash wholesale deals that I've done okay. so awesome that's great all right well um, that brings us to the tip of the week so Mimi's here, but she's not going to do the tip of the week today. Sid is going to uh, give us a great tip. What do you have? So something that's really helped me in, in um, not just a, being like achieving my goals in this land business, but in every aspect of life, whatever you set your mind to is um, goal setting. And I've read this book called atomic habits by james clear and i really liked because he goes into and he explains that um you just kind of set your day up by doing the you know small micro tasks that lead to um big results and um he's not saying that once you set a goal then that's it you just work towards the goal that goal he says you make lifestyle changes to where you want to go and so my tip would be on that, read that book. And then there's another part of that is I use this app called Things. It's, I think it's just for Apple. I'm not sure. But it lets you set reoccurring events um, or reoccurring tasks um, in your life. So that's really helped me. So um, I kind of build my goals out to where I want to be. But I, I create a, like a reoccurring um, task that happens on a certain day. So I kind of don't have to think about it. Like my phone, that, that app things reminds me of what tasks I need to do to get to my goal. So, and then, so I, all I have to focus on is doing that task. And I know if I do my task, then the goal will eventually happen. So I really like that app things. Um, it helps me stay focused and work towards my goal. You just need to build your, I guess your path or the, you know, decide on what key lead indicators that you need to do to, get your lag indicators, like the goal, and then just do them. Excellent. Thanks, Sid. All right. And that, uh, we Scott, know Scott, Todd something? Scott uh, we know Scott Todd won't be able to take advantage of that amazing app. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work on his surface, right? It might work on his Apple iPhone though. True. Very he true. doesn't want people to know about that, but right. it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> good point all right well that wraps up the podcast for today uh should we do the standard en ending is everybody what yes. ready yes all right yeah um i don't even know how to begin it without mark either. leading us here so <laughs> let's just go let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. Ring.
All right. Three. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Give us the countdown, Eric. Mark is totally going to make fun of that. I know. <laughs> I messed it up. I gave it my best. No, you but, did a great job. Yeah, Mike, you'll have to tell us how the uh, the cruise goes. You're, the, uh, yeah, I may be talking to you guys for a long time from that cruise. <laughs> yeah, you might. <laughs> Mimi's right, though. There, you might actually not have many uh, passengers on there. Could be, could be the best vacation in the world. So many trips yeah. are getting canceled. Dave had a yeah. conference this week. It got canceled. I went to see someone at a furniture shop who was leaving on vacation. Her vacation was canceled. I mean, it's just left and right. Um, All kinds of as long as I have uh, scotch and internet, we'll survive. There you go. Business can run and you can enjoy yourself. It's all good. Weather will be nice wherever you are, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, what more could you ask for? You got the love uh, of your life with you. It's all good. We're going to try a nightcap episode. Nightcap oh, episode yeah. on, gonna, on the cruise ship. No run. way. Oh, yeah. From the cruise ship? Oh, yeah. I'll, we'll do it from the, one of the... Oh. I've never had a cruise from the deck. Is that right? Yeah. The deck. Yeah. Oh, that's but, awesome. Yeah. Most definitely. Excellent. That'll be, that'll be fun. Where's it go? Uh, so it goes to all the different islands. We fly out of Puerto Rico to... Um, a number of different islands. That's uh, I'm awesome. not sure. That's awesome. So yeah, you'll be warm. Yeah, no, it's uh, it will be warm. Um, and I don't know, it's going to be interesting. I think it might actually be awesome. Uh, it might. Um, you might be safer, right? Because no be one with COVID nineteen gets on the boat, and all of us are getting infected. Then you might be yeah, the, the cruise ship is going to be the uh, the safe zone. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's going to be great or it's going to be the beginning of like a Stephen King uh, TV series. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> plus, I read yesterday, plus I read yesterday that the virus, just like the flu virus, it likes cold weather. So you're going to so, be down there. It's, I mean, yeah, the virus isn't going to even be able to live for five days like it does up here in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's going to live for good. like five seconds. You'll be fine. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, well, we, we, we'll keep you all posted. Probably, uh, we'll, we'll have a running tally how many podcasts I'm on from the cruise ship. Four, yeah. five, nice. six. We didn't get any <laughs> snow. We had the warmest winter in 140 years. So I'm hoping I, won't, I didn't get any snow days. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have coronavirus days. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kids home because of coronavirus. <laughs> What's with all the toilet paper? Why are people stocking up on toilet paper? I think they're just doing it, just pantries in general. Did you hear about the lady that thought she was ordering 48 rolls and ordered 48 boxes and ended up with like 1,500 rolls of toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, people are acting like it's a, a giant snowstorm or, a, oh, yeah. you know, like a, a yeah. hurricane or something. Yeah. Like, they need to stock up on the essentials. But, you know, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you see the did you see the meme yesterday that that went viral where uh, you know the claw machine where you can get different toys out of the claw machine? Right. Uh, some store manager thought it'd be creative to throw toilet paper in this claw machine, and he, he was taking pictures of it, and it, it was only two dollars per try, so you could you know put two dollars in and see if you could get a one roll of toilet paper with the claw. I thought that was hilarious. That is funny. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, if I can find that. <laughs> Eric, I'm I'm impressed with your uh, hosting capabilities. Very nice. I don't know, guys. It's a one-time <laughs> thing. I would say there probably isn't a better time than to be able to work from home, and and people would probably love to own land where they can get away from everybody. So I think our business is going to thrive in this climate. Yep. There you go. I agree. Write some headlines around the coronavirus <laughs> for your right. ads. Off gridding <laughs> yeah. get away from it all. Get away from people. <laughs> no germs out there. Yep. Yeah. No, it's it's a good time to be working from home. Yep. All right. Well, cruise ship. Have well, fun. thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. <laughs>